Hi everyone, my name is John McBride and I'm with Acuity Brands. I'm here today to talk to you about smart lighting systems uh, on behalf of our partners, uh, Gasser Bush and Cochrane Supply. Acuity Brands is the largest lighting manufacturer in North America, and we also have the largest supply of lighting controls to complement those. Not only do we have lighting controls for interior applications, but we also have exterior and building automation controls through DISTEC. DISTEC is a company that we acquired several years ago, and we're so thankful for the expertise that they bring to our lighting control knowledge base that we already have. Lighting controls has changed a lot over the last several years, and the scope of the building has changed also. Many lighting controls in the past were either standalone or they were specialty, where you would see multiple lighting control systems being utilized through an entire building. Many of the devices were, like outdoor, were only on and off through through uh, photo cells, whereas interior, you would have more standalone occupancy sensors. And you might also have some high-end dimming, but many times those systems did not talk to each other. Occasionally, you would see something like an emergency system that would do reporting back for emergency light fixtures. But again, all of those systems were standalone. As we're transitioning later on into lighting control solutions now, we're starting to see more of those pulled together into a singular interface. The brand that Acuity uses is a product called Enlight. And currently, Enlight is enabled for interior and exterior applications. We're also bringing online the emergency feature sets. But as far as anything you, you see within your building, warehouse, office, parking lot, interior, exterior, you name it, Enlight is the perfect solution for you. The reason why Enlight allows us to do this is because it uses a combination of platforms. So we can do wired, lighting controls through CAT5. And within our CAT5 system, we're just using it as a simplified wiring method. We're not doing a POE system, so we don't follow the same limitations that you would see on a traditional POE system. We're just using the CAT5 to wire our devices together. And from there, each device either consumes power or provides power and does its own bus management. You don't need to do a lot of calculations. And in some cases, we have fixtures where we have the controls already integrated into it, so you don't even need to supply power packs or any form of transformers to provide power for your system. We see a lot of the wired applications installed for standalone applications, where a customer may want to look down the road to integrating them for an interior space. But another application for this is anytime you see any form of color tuning or color changing. If you're seeing adjustable tunable colors or you're seeing color changing, almost all of those controls today are going to be wired, and Enlight will do that for you. We also have 900 megahertz wireless, and that's through our Enlight Air system. That allows us to wirelessly communicate from fixture to fixture and fixture to switch using 900 megahertz. Now, within those devices, we also embed Bluetooth technology, and the Bluetooth allows us to use that mobile app listed below called Clarity as a commissioning tool. But the 900 megahertz allows us to talk between fixture and fixture and fixture and device so that we can cover large areas. In many cases, when we have open air, we're seeing wireless coverage patterns of up to 1,000 feet. On an interior space, we're seeing anywhere between four and 600 feet on a standard construction. Highly dense constructions may only give us about a 200 foot radius, but most applications we're seeing nowadays are four to 600 feet. The other thing is our Eclipse controller. The little black box in the middle of the picture on the right hand side is our Enlight Eclipse controller. That's our front end control. And we have to have one of those anytime our lighting control system has to change time features and when I say change time features, that's things like during the day, I want the occupancy sensors to turn the lights on and off. And then after hours, I want them to turn on and off with a different time delay. Or I would like them to turn on in the morning by sensor or switch and stay on. And then at 5 p.m., revert back to occupancy sensor on, occupancy sensor off. Anytime we have one of those, we have to create what we call a profile in our system, and profiles are stored through the Eclipse controller, and all time-based functions occur through the Eclipse controller. Our Eclipse controller also gives us the ability to integrate into building management systems. So we can do that through BACnet MSTP or IP, but all that occurs through the Eclipse controller. The Eclipse controller is a DISTEC Eclipse unit, 
and it has been specialized to work with lighting control systems, specifically N-Light. Additional features that we have that we can utilize through the Eclipse controller are things like metering, where we attach the meters to it, we use Rogowski coils, and we get revenue grade, real-time power metering, and it reports out through a simplified dashboard that your customers can put in their lobbies. We also have analytics that will view when spaces were occupied or unoccupied and report back out through space utilization, which you'll see a little bit later. And we can also do lighting control through this front end, which gives us remote access via the net if we need to. And this Eclipse controller can be put within the customer's local area network or on their cloud, so you can have remote access to it. Within our lighting control network, we have a combination of devices. We have both standalone devices and fixture embedded controls. On the far left side, you're going to see a combination of some of our NLight Air products. And the Air is shown by the little NLight symbol with the three curves over the top of it, uh, symbolizing the wireless. Now, the fixture on the far left hand side is our BLT, and it's one of our most popular fixtures, but it's showing you the NLight embedded fixture. And within that NLight embedded fixture, it has the occupancy sensor already there. With the occupancy sensor, it'll detect motion and it can be scheduled to turn the lights on and off when there's no occupancy, or it can be programmed to, to have special actions. So if we wanted to affect the high-end trim of a fixture during a set period of the day, where we don't ever want the fixture to go above a certain percentage, or maybe it's a hallway, we don't actually even want the lights to turn off, we can use our NLight Eclipse controller just to the right to send out a signal through wireless to tell that fixture during this time of the day, turn the lights on, allow them to stay on, go no more than this level high, and don't ever shut the lights off, go no more than this level low. Along with the NLight Air system and having this full complement of lighting controls, we also, our fixtures, we also have lighting controls that go along with it. And you notice there's other devices on this screen. We have occupancy sensors for standard interior office space. So that's our 360 degree sensor. The sensor right below it is a high base sensor. One of the strengths of the NLight system is we are the only lighting control company out there that gives you a full complement of indoor, outdoor, and industrial high bay applications. If you have warehouse aisles, or just a manufacturing facility and you want to put occupancy sensors in, go ahead and do that. That's one of those applications where we would highly recommend a wireless solution because then you can group fixtures together very easily without running a lot of low voltage cable. In many of those applications, people use tow motors and as they drive through, the occupancy sensor detects motion, but many times it doesn't turn the lights on until you're underneath the light or already past it. Wireless controls allow us to group those together in such a fashion where the first occupancy sensor can detect motion and turn on the next two or three fixtures ahead so that way people are always driving into a well-lit space. Other fixtures like the RES-7 occupancy sensor on the lower right-hand side give us the ability to embed them in any single fixture we want. That's the occupancy sensor that we have embedded in the fixture that you're seeing on the left, and we can also do that fixture as a special version that goes into our industrial fixtures and it can even go into our parking garage fixtures. It gives us the ability to put our lighting controls in any facility you want anywhere. The power pack in the middle gives us the ability to control non NLight enabled loads. So if you're looking at an application and it doesn't have an embedded control option within the fixture, you can just use a standard power pack to turn those lights on and off. Within those power packs, we also provide zero to 10 volt output to control the fixture for on off and for dimming. Many LED solutions nowadays all utilize zero to 10 volt. And within the end light system, we can adjust the high and the low end trim to match the driver rating that that control would require. We make that power pack in several different types. We have a standard power pack that gives us the on off and the raise lower dimming. We also make one that is geared towards uh, emergency control. And within the emer emergency control, it would sense the normal circuit within the space, and if normal power were to be lost, it would shut the relay and force the lights on. At that point, when the generator kicks on, it would automatically force the lights on, 
and it would ignore all dimming and all unnecessary inputs like occupancy sensors <clears throat> or switches. Your lights would then go on to 100% and they would stay there until normal power was restored. Once no normal power was restored, it would go back to normal operation. We can also do the same power pack for receptacle control. If you're trying to comply with energy code and you need to shut off 50% of your receptacles, we also have those power pack solutions within the NLight system. And then right next to that, you see our switches. NLight carries a full line of switches that allow us to do on off, raise lower dimming, or even scene control in many cases. So whatever your application is, let us know. We're happy to help. Uh, next, we're going to cover energy management through the NLight lighting control system. Energy management can be accomplished through the SiteView Energy application. And the SiteView Energy application is an application that can be added to the NLight Eclipse module. It then takes those, those meters, the SiteView Energy meters, and uses the Rogowski coils off of those to measure the meter off of our, to measure the power off of our main distribution panels. That information is fed back up into the Eclipse controller and report it out through a pre-can dashboard that you can take a look at and you can see which of your panels is using the most energy and how does that relate year over year, day over day, month over month, whatever metric you're looking for. It's a very simple, easy to use system that doesn't require any customization at all. And from there, you can also go in and customize, you can customize your individual information like your business name, your location, or even put your graphics in there. But as far as how do you set up the meters or any of that information, you don't need to do that. It does it automatically for you and reports it all out on the dashboard. Other applications that NLight is enabled for are things like space utilization. And space utilization is the ability for us to utilize the occupancy sensors within our system to report back to the Eclipse controller. And again, to take advantage of this, you have to have the Eclipse controller, which means that you're probably either doing a network solution or you potentially have some time delay set up or you're, or you're scheduling when your lights would automatically turn on, stay on, and then revert to sensor on, sensor off. So once you have the Eclipse controller, you can then utilize space utilization. Space utilization has two different forms. We have a standard version and we have a cloud-based version. The standard version will give you one week of rolling data, and it will tell you when your space was occupied and unoccupied, and it does it in five-minute increments through the hour on every single load device. If you go with the cloud-based version, you can get the graphics that you see here on the right-hand side, where you can have the graphics that will show you when the space was occupied, what percentage of the time, the darker the the coloring, the more occupied the space was, and then at the bottom you get the chart, which can show you when the space was heavily occupied or lightly occupied. We can also go device by device and take a look at it and see during what period of the day you were actually utilizing that space and how each individual space was broken out. So space utilization is just another one of those tools that Acuity provides to help make your building a little more energy efficient. The next feature that we're going to talk about is where NLight Air is going and what are some of the future features that we'll see in it. And wayfinding and navigation are one of those utilities that we will see on the NLight Air system in the near future. We're currently doing this with test customers, and this comes through our Atrius product group, but you're going to see NLight Air as a product start to introduce these features <clears throat> down the road. So what is wayfinding and navigation and how do we do this through NLight Air? NLight Air utilizes that 900 megahertz to talk fixture to fixture or fixture to the device, but then it also has that Bluetooth beacon in there. We can then in the future take that Bluetooth beacon and turn it on and have it beacon out a Bluetooth location. Once we commission that and tell it where it's at, from there a third party can develop an app to read those beacon locations and figure out where it's at by putting a little X on a map. From there, you can then build up something very similar to an Apple Maps or a Google Maps where you can say, I'm in this location and I would like to get to this location. How do I get there? On an interior application, 
GPS does not work because the building cuts off the signals coming from the satellites. But what we're doing is we're using the lighting controls within the fixtures themselves to duplicate that satellite network, if you will. And from there, app developers will be able to use that information to help us maneuver through a building. So if you're thinking about that next hospital application or complicated building where they have an old building, they're adding on another phase, adding on another phase, and you're figuring out how do I get from one location to a next, future features like indoor navigation and positioning are the kind of feature sets you want to start to consider. All of that will tie back into the Eclipse controller, and again, it will tie back through the cloud, and that's already enabled for us. The only thing you need to do is update the firmware, and within Enlight, there's never, ever a cost for you to update firmware or add new features. One of the other things that we have within our market is the ability to do lighting audits. And I mentioned earlier that we have our partner, Gasser Bush, who has teamed up with Cochrane Supply. Gasser Bush is the largest lighting control manufacturer in Michigan, and they represent the Acuity line, and they will also come out and do lighting audits for you or your customers. They cover the Toledo market all the way up through Michigan, all the way up into Saginaw, and as far out as Battle Creek. If you have an application and you would like them to come out and talk to your customers, uh, please uh, schedule a, an appointment with your Cochrane Supply uh, representative, and they would be happy to come on out and with their, with their Gas or Bush individual and schedule something for you. We thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate your participation in this WebEx, and if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Reach out to your local Cochrane Supply individual and they can get you in touch with myself, another Acuity individual, or somebody at Gasser Bush to assist you further. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.